Hello and welcome to another episode of my garden journey. I'm Steve. Um, last video I just went through the kind of um, what I started out this garden wanting it to be and where it's getting to and plans for the future and that but since then I've done a little tidy up and a little move around constantly moving stuff around so I thought it'd be a good opportunity while it's looking half decent <laughs> to um, go through and see how things are doing uh, so first thing you may notice is my wind detecting British flag there don't worry I'm not a member of the NF or something like that uh, that's just because I've got one on top of the climbing frame right in the center of the garden so when because that's not subject to uh, you know fences and things like that I want to know when the winds blowing one way on that flag what is this flag doing and stuff like that just get into grips with the wind a bit but the fat cedar at the back there coming along really nicely like I said I'm going to train it up there and then put some trellis or something along behind these seats um, he's doing nice there so he's all right to stay I just tied it the second lot in to keep him vaguely going in the right direction got some new ferns well that I've just moved over here at the back there in the center that's the lady fern uh, apparently they like it damp <laughs> Sorry, I was gonna say something else then um, so what I've taken is one of the other royal ferns and put him in there where the Dryopteryx Wallichiana was that's now moved which we'll get to but because I did a little messing around with the irrigation I got some little sprayers can you see that little orange thing there on the irrigation when I put this vertical garden in I was always thinking ahead and left this little feed off here and it's got a little stop tap on it so I can just adjust how much comes out of it because they're quite beastly. I'll go into it, I'll do a proper irrigation video at some point, I'm just experimenting with it at the moment. Um, but essentially I'm trying to recreate obviously humid conditions for the Cyathea and the two Dixonias and then there'll probably be another Dixonia maybe where that royal fern is or maybe where that lady fern is but a bigger one. So I wanted to try and like get this area like misty when it's being watered so that it gets all the trunks and all that. I'm sort of getting through it but it sort of jets out towards us now in like a pizza shape if you imagine a triangle. Um, so the small points up there and where the crust out here but it doesn't get the back side of this tree fern the body of this tree fern so I'm going to do a bit of messing around with that but we'll get to that um, so anyway this area is constantly wet is what I'm trying to get to um, which is why I put two wet loving ferns in there the cyathea is doing quite well I really quite like these cyatheas I must admit I don't know if you can see but there is a, um, a frond or whatever you want to call it coming up there uh, where's the thing? There it is. One just dead in the centre and then there's a couple more down on the bottom left but the crown's getting big. What I tend to do with these ones at the moment is when one frond pops up I clip one off that's a bit damaged because I've left them on as much as I can from where I've bought them. This Dixonia is throwing up a new one as well right in the centre there. This one looks quite nice. I like the colours of the Dixonia. It's nice limey green. Um, and then over here we've got the tree fern which has obviously put his fronds up for this year um, but he's looking I, I do water it quite a lot um, so it look you know it's hopefully going to last the winter but we'll soon find out this little um, silver fern the metallicum one it's a really I don't know if you can get that color on that I'll try and get a bit closer without getting covered in spiders but it's like a real matte white and the sort of the veins or whatever you are, are they pinules or pinnets but effectively the stems is like a real burgundy pink and then it sort of fades out to the white tinge and then the green on the leaves is really quite nice to look at I'm looking forward this is the first time it's thrown out a leaf that looks like that so I think it likes it in this spot it might be because it's under these leaves so it keeps a bit of humidity as soon as we move the other one over there which we'll go and look at that one got like started going crazy straight away as well so I think these like humid conditions so underneath things is obviously quite good uh, we've got the fats here which I clipped um, the best angle of it is from actually over here um, if you can sort of see it's more stemmy now 
I cut off all the little stems that were coming up and just left the two big ones. I'm um, hoping to grow that up on the stems, probably up about as high as this, midway up the fence panel, and then for the leaves to start coming out then, so that's obviously a slow go. I moved one of the polypodiums over here just because um, there was a big old hole here anyway, um, and we'll get to that in a minute. So the poly polypodiums, who, which is my next project actually, um, I'm going to start experimenting with them a little bit because I watched a program the other day and it said they were epiphytic, which makes them great for these type things when I do them and for also the waterfall that's going in there because they won't need much soil. Uh, this dry up to its errata is it this one? Yeah the errata this is doing okay. A oh, bit, of, bit of leaf fall in it. Oh yeah I, sh I should also mention as well that a while ago I started off like a bug habitat over there using the sort of twigs that are all falling down but what I've decided which is a genius idea is because I keep getting stuff grow through the gap between the fence panel and this little sort of chocker fence I've put down um, I've started just chucking them all down in there and hopefully I can fill the whole gaps up over years I guess cut up bamboo and things like that and then it acts as a big bug hotel and it also stops stuff coming through from the other side so there we go uh, this is the dryopterates uh, erythrosa brilliance uh, this is the first time it thinks it's look i think it's looking like it's supposed to then if you can see the coloration on that leaf is very nice um sort of halfway there that one but these are going like quite, you know, it's quite red. <laughs> it's like really red. So that's nice. It adds a splash of colour. The reason I didn't think anything of it is because I think some of the Herrenhausen's, the Setif Polystichum seri, uh, potty, uh, Polystichum Setiferums, I didn't realise they were, I thought they were dying, but it turns out they are, uh, you know, deciduous, not evergreen. So. Anyway, I haven't done anything with this yet, but as you can see, this Saxi Fraga Stolenpendria is actually doing alright. It's starting to send out some tendrils and things like that, so it seems to be quite happy there, to be honest with you. So I might just leave them in there. The ivy I'll probably move. I'll just put it on the floor. I want to use ivy as ground cover, um, so we'll do that. But other than that, these are all looking alright. Uh, the camellias, obviously, I'll just give him a quick trim. He's not doing too much. Again, these two Jurassic Golds. Um, these are looking really nice now, actually. They're nice and that vivid colour. So the Dryopterites er erythrosa and the dry Jurassic Golds are sort of late bloomers, if you're interested, as in they look better in the later year. And funny enough, this Polystichum polyblepharum was actually the other way around. This thing looked amazing in April, May, when it had that real tinge, but now it's starting to die off a bit. Um, it's not looking great, but that tells me that I can work it. You know, this is what this is all about, is seeing what they look like at different times of year before I put them in their final resting places. Um, and then I can sort of hopefully almost do it as one, you know, if this one's here, and it starts dying back like it is now suddenly these two are coming into life and if I put that one the other side of it or however so there we go this other camellia I'm half thinking of moving one of these camellias but we'll get to that another day the aspleniums looking good as always uh, this is uh, the Herrenhausen that she can see again is like the polyblepharum starting to die off a little bit in places it is throwing up new fronds so maybe it is getting damaged or something somewhere uh, across to the royal fern which was here but I moved him across because this looks like it's going to be a low wide grower and the royal ferns look like they're quite tall so hopefully that will do something this one wasn't doing too well in the middle bed in full sun this uh, shuttlecock fern so I've moved him up with the other one which is doing really well so hopefully that will recover and it might look quite good uh, this was the Dryopteryx Wally Wally Kiana Crispum, as you can see with the little frayed fronds at the back, uh, as opposed to ones like this, which are kind of a bit more fern-like. Um, that one moved over from where the tree ferns were over there, um, but I'm not a fan of the Crispum, to be honest with you, so um, we'll see. It might grow on me, um, but 
I've shoved them to the back basically. This is another heron housing again, not looking too amazing. I was thinking originally, because this gets the morning sun here, this is the first one that started going, that it was where it was getting water on it first thing, um, and then it, that it was getting scorched in the sun. But that one doesn't get the sun in the morning, it's still doing the same thing, so we'll soon find out. The old Nicotiana's probably looking at its semi best or not. I can see how it would work with these uh, giant, you know, the giant leaves, they're pretty big. Uh, it's just not my cup of tea, really, so I'll try and get this one out hopefully before it seeds, but otherwise I'll leave it in there for now. They're not particularly strong scented. I've been smelling them at different times of days and you know, it's not overpowering and I can hardly smell it most of the time, but we'll leave it to go for all the flowers. You can see how many's coming through. So that's quite nice. The Nephophias are getting munched by slugs. I actually saw, sorry, I tripped over my shoelace. Nephophias are getting munched by slugs, but it is throwing up like, probably another two in there to come up. The one on the left I think is dead because it's all gone yellow. Um, but I'll let that run its course. I do like the Nephophias, but I need to find a place for them. Um, my T-Rex, Tetrapanax, is not doing great. Unfortunately, I put it in a week before I went on holiday for a long weekend, and it was that scorching one where it was like 34, 36 degrees. Um, I don't think it did it any favours, me not being here, being able to keep an eye on everything. Um, so, but a new leaf's coming up now, I'm keeping it watered. Um, so hopefully it'll do all right. I've moved an Aspelium from the centre bed over here, just because I want to see how they do in like good sun. Um, so that's that. The Lophosauria is going pretty well. It's throwing up some new fronds, not big ones. You can see one coming out at the bottom left there, and there's one coming up towards us from about six o'clock couple of other little ones and essentially what I'm going to do with this because some of these are mangled from when they were growing down in the um in the shop so as like a couple of like these two that have just unfilled here when they get to bigger and they're fully unfilled I'll probably chop this bent one off and then when the next frond comes out I'll chop that one at the back off and sort of do it like that rather than just think well I'll just cut the lot off because obviously I want it to do something but it looks nice this this leaf I really like this one here the way it sort of comes up and arches over and if you can imagine that sized up that look, could look quite nice this is a dryopteryx which was in the centre bed I want to say it's and a phoenix, um, but it might be a Felix mass. I can't remember which way round it is, and I'm not good enough to identify them yet. But I'm tr I'll just put that one there just to add a bit of a ferny thing. But one thing I did notice when I did that was that it kind of took the ferniness away from the Lophosauria, so that's something to bear in mind. Anyway, across to the full sunbed, you can see I've you've probably seen anyway, I've taken everything out that isn't the dahlias apart from one fern. Um, the ivy, that's what I want the ivy to do, is sort of give me some ground cover. I've taken these out because they're just annuals and I actually want to see what the flowers are like now. I've left that fern in there because he's probably where he wants to go. Uh, the um, and setting really are, he's doing okay. See a new leaf coming up. Um, and yeah, what I thought for this bed, which I touched on in the last video, what, what I've done with the banana pups on both plants, because they're in effectively a triangle flower bed, I've left the pups that are sort of facing the corners. Uh, and the idea is, is that if I get some big bushy ferns, evergreen ferns on each corner, then they'll sort of overhang all the sort of things to make it look a bit jungly. Um, and then I'll put flowers like in the bits there, not like sort of between me and you the banana now you know in the middle of this straight edge and the same around and then it just gives it a bit of ever, evergreen thing for when I, all these are covered up uh, later on in the year hopefully but I'm just I'm still fleshing out some ideas as to what plants what flowers I can have in there when I've got three massive ferns in there but anyway and then across to this bed Canna's doing really well um, now I chopped down the big sunflower that was there. There's a polypodium, Volgar, the other one in there. That's the sword fern. I'm not sure if it's deciduous or not. It looks like it's drying off, but really I could do with moving them across about six inches, but I might leave them and do it a bit later. Uh, but what that's done is between trimming the pups off, 
I've left one there, one there, that other one's too small and we need one to come up the centre towards us now, towards this ginger. Um, but now he's exposed to full light because he hasn't got a big sunflower on top of him or banana leaves. He's doing really, uh, really well. And uh, you can just about see the flower spikes coming up from that one, so that's good. Um, oh yeah, the... Uh, what was I going to say? The... Oh yeah, what I'm doing, what I want to do is with this one for example and the other one is have like my three ferns which will be, you know, sh we'll call that short height and then next I'll have these bananas pups which will sort of hang over them at the middle height and then the initial banana tree will be tall and hang over all of it so it's sort of like layered if you see what I mean so that's, I think that's where I'm going to go with it. Eucomus is still looking really good. Um, it's just looking not as good as it did whatever it was two or three weeks ago but you can still see it's nice i like just being sat in this bench here which is next to it and just um doing that leaving this sunflower in for now because he's uh blooming the bletchland chilinessi is loving the full light um so i'm happy with that leave him in there this ginger's leaning i'm assuming it was because it was growing under banana leaves but i've chopped all them off and it's sending them up some new shoots at the back which are straight so hopefully that'll do something with that um other than that that's about it there's me pups which i just chopped off the leaves to trimmed a bit of the bamboo waiting i'm trimming these things crazy um you can see i, I did it about two or three days ago <laughs> it's already sending out massive things uh, i just want these to bloom they're supposed to be nice blue flowers these morning glories he needs a water water although i don't know why because i gave him loads yesterday uh, and then the fig tree i did actually do a fan training on it slightly i don't know if you can see that in there just where i've chopped off the odd ones and left the two that are coming out sort of parallel to the wall and then when it gets up probably another foot or at the next opportune moment i'll do the same and then i'm kind of deciding i was going to fan train it where it is now but i think that space is too small for it which means i might move it out the front and do it against the fence because i've got a bit of room out the front to do it so yeah there we go but so that's a nice update on everything uh i don't know what i'm doing next but probably um that, take out that small flower bed there in front of the um, rear bed as we're looking at it that little small one in the middle and just replace that with stones um, but yeah it all looks uh, quite nice nice to just sit here and watch so anyway hope you're finding some time to just sit down and watch things happen in your garden um, or other people's whichever so yeah have a good day